Do you ever wish you could witness the greatness and power of God in action today, beyond what is written in the Bible? At Pilgrim Way Lives, we collect and bring you testimonies from Christians around the world of what God is doing in their lives to show you that our Lord Jesus Christ is very much alive today. Your testimony might be the only one that will resonate with someone somewhere around the globe, so come and testify. We collect testimonies in all formats, whether it's video, audio, or written. No testimony is too small. Let God use your testimony for good. You can testify in person or online by sending us your testimony at pilgrimwaylives.com slash testify. Join us in this conquest in gathering and sharing testimonies by supporting us financially at pilgrimwaylives.com slash donate. Thank you for supporting and participating in Pilgrim Way Lives. For more information about our ministry, visit pilgrimwaylives.com and contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. So I called up the attorney. I said, file the paperwork. So I remember freaking out after I did that. And it was about a week or two before our court hearing. And I ran over to church and I'm like, I need to talk to, to Pastor Matt. I need to talk to Pastor Matt. Matt wasn't there, but Pastor Jesse was there. He was like, I'm here. Can I help you? Can I pray with you? And I told him what was going on. And it's exactly what God wanted me to hear. That's exactly the person who he wanted me to talk to. And he said, I'm going to tell you something, Shannon. He said, what's the worst possible thing that could happen? I said, I lose my son and I don't have any custody of my son and he has to go and live with this other person. He said, okay, if that's the worst possible thing that happens, let's pretend it does. Even if that happens, even if. And I was like, then, oh, I was crying. Oh, like, don't say that. Oh, my gosh. Like, are you prophesying over me? Like, is this going to happen? He goes, even if that happens, God is with you. Even if that happens, we are with you. And then he told me about the Roman soldiers and how their shields used to have these hooks. The hooks. And they could hook. And he to, said, to each other. right now, he said, your faith is weak. You're struggling. And that's okay. He goes, because we're going to lock shields around you and we're going to pray for you and we're going to be here for you. And he goes, and even if you lose him, and I didn't, but even if you lose him, he goes, we're going to be here for you. The step of faith. Yeah. And so there was another person who, um, can I have one of those tissues? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thanks. And so another woman who was going to um, the West Side Calvary, um, witnessed how my son's father just barged into church during worship. And I was, when I worship, I'm all in. My eyes are usually closed, so I don't know, even know who's around good. me. I don't know what's going on around me. I guess he barged in, went to the row in front of me, and jostled my shoulder, and I was kind of freaked out. And he says, you need to go get our son. He goes, I need to take him to Cub Scouts. And I was shaken. I was scared. I was freaked out. He goes, nobody here will let me get him. And I was like, oh, okay. So I did say he could go to the Cub Scouts thing. So I thought it was going to be after church, but it wasn't. And I didn't want to cause a scene. So I went and got Nathan, and Nathan didn't want to go. He was like, no. He says, I'm at church. He goes, can you come back? You know, he's looking at his dad, like, can you come back? He's like, no, let's go. Let's go now. So I said, it's okay. I'll get you later. It's okay. So he left. And the person sitting next to me, um, for several months, she discipled me. She mentored me. And she gave me tissue. And she said um, that she would go with me to court. And she did. And she sat in the back because it was December. And we went to court. And I was scared because the person who I had hired to represent me had passed off the job to an associate mm -hmm. attorney. And that person was telling me, you're going to lose your son. And I go, what do you mean I'm going to lose my son? He goes, we don't have any witnesses to take to trial. Um, just negative, negative, negative. And I said, well, I didn't get any notifications you needed witnesses. I didn't get any information, the lack of communication. He goes, well, it's too late. So I went into the meeting the day before court. 
and I told the associate, you're fired. I didn't hire you anyways. Get the attorney I did hire in here. And he says, well, no, I'm going to give this to him to use. This is the head attorney. Um, he's going to take over your case, and he'll go with you to court. I said, no, he won't. I hired you. I did not hire him. I said, rearrange your schedule. I said, you're coming with me. And he looked at me, and I'm praying. In the back of my mind, I'm like, Lord, please, I can't lose my son. Even if, but I would really like it if I didn't lose my son. <laughs> yeah. Even if, <laughs> I just kept, you know, reminding myself, even if, even if. So hmm. they, did, they did the schedule rearrange, and the head attorney says, all right, let's get to business. He goes, we don't have any witnesses. We're past the deadline. I said, okay. And so we talked, we prepped, we talked, we prepped, we went to court. And my friend from church, she came in and she sat in the back. My mom was there. My mom said, please don't call me to the stand. She says, I get too nervous and I might mess up. And I said, great. You're my mom. Like, how can you mess up? But okay. My daughter, she's like, put me on there because she's the oldest one, right? Uh -huh. She's the oldest. She goes, I have a thing or two to say on record. And I said, if he needs you, he'll call you. This was the coolest thing. This was God showing up in a way for me that I've never had felt at that point ever in my life. So seven witnesses. Bam, bam. My attorney is shooting them down. And he asks them maybe three or four questions. No more questions. He discredited all of them. So the dad gets up there. And I'm praying. My friend's praying. And I'm like, Lord, compel him to tell the truth. Compel him to tell the truth. And 70 minutes later, the last question my attorney says is, is Shannon a good mother? And he was in a suit and tie, and he looked very professional. And he's, his mouth was doing this weird thing like this. His body kind of did this. He sat up. And I'm praying. And when I was praying, I visualized, I felt like the Lord literally stood in front of me. And he said, yes, through his teeth. Like he didn't even open his mouth. Like he was compelled to say it. No <laughs> further questions. Bam. The truth shall set you yeah, free. Yeah, the truth, right? Amen. And so, <laughs> then um, when it was my turn, um, that was my last question for my attorney. Is he a good father? And I said, yes. I mean, as a father, you know, he, he did what he needed to do as a father. And so I didn't have any problems with that. But it was the release of the control. The release of my pride. And so when it came back and the ruling was done, um, the judge did ask me what was my motivation behind this because we were never married. Mm -hmm. And I said, this was a toxic relationship. It was emotionally abusive. It was not healthy for any of the kids. He had three previous kids from someone else. I had my three previous kids from other people. And I said, we can't be together. This is not a good relationship. I said, I want something fair. And so the judge on record said, okay. So everyone asked, are we going to break? He says, no, I'm ruling right now. And he said, this is the ruling. Mom, you get him every other weekend. On the summers, it's, um, no, I'm sorry. I messed that part up. Dad, you get him every other weekend. He lives with mom. Summertime, it's a week on, a week off. We split Christmas down the middle. We split spring break down the middle. And whoever has them on the other holidays is whoever has them on that weekend. Mm -hmm. He goes, that's pretty fair. And he says, and Calvary is his church. And it's on record. Are you in Asia, Africa, South America, Europe, Australia, or North America with a burning testimony of what God did in your life to share? Do you have a testimony you want to share with the world? There are two options for you to do that. The option one, online testimony submission. 
To submit your testimony online, send us your written audio and or video recorded testimony at contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. If your testimony file is too large to be sent as an email attachment, such as a large audio or video file, send us a public sharing link to it in the email or include the link in the online testimony submission form on our website at pilgrimwaylives.com slash online dash submission. Make sure the link is set to public to ensure that we can access and download the testimony. Please include pictures pertaining to your testimony that we can use during the production phase to enhance your testimony. Instructions for online testimony submission can be found at pilgrimwaylives.com slash online dash submission. The option two, in-person testimony recording. Contact us to schedule an in-person testimony session by filling out the form at pilgrimwaylives.com slash in dash person dash testimony. This option greatly depends on our availability to schedule an in-person testimony recording session with you. For more information regarding in-person testimony recordings, visit pilgrimwaylives.com slash in dash person dash testimony. For more information regarding our ministry, visit pilgrimwaylives.com or email us at contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. Thank you and happy testifying. Hope to hear from you soon. God bless and shalom.